we partner with a lot of designers all around the world to bring a little bit of red carpet here to our slice of heaven in West Texas. Uh, even though we've got all the designers and all a huge showroom full of jewelry, we do a lot of custom work. So we're very well known and trusted for doing that. It's hard to believe this West Texas showroom of precious stones and fine jewelry has its origin way back in 1918. Evan Higgins is quick to point out Holland's trademarks of ageless quality and timeless designs. Our true pride and joy is our Western products and our miniature spur jewelry. Let me show you. Our miniature spur jewelry is where it all started back in the 30s. Well, it was the 1930s, the Great Depression. Jewelry designer Chase Holland came up with a unique design as an expression of deep gratitude during that painful chapter in history. He went through and wanted something to give to his vendors and his local friends, businessmen, to thank them for their lending and support. Here is your spur. So everybody that won their spurs received one from him. I actually have heard of these because my old friend Jerry Baird, the world famous chuck wagon cook, gave me one of these for Christmas. And he said, the next time you're in San Angelo, Bob, you've got to go by Holland. You know Jerry Baird, we should take you back where the magic happens. I'll Let's show you how they're it. done. Absolutely. Keep an open mind. This is an actual work area. We work back here all day, every day. Let me get you Brant Horner. Is this where the spurs are made? You betcha, right here, just like they've always been made. So each one uh, unique, one of a kind. Pretty much, yeah. Every single one will have its own initials in it, own style. So these things have been made at Holland since 1930. 1936. It was Chase Holland's idea to give his friends and people that he knew that helped him through the depression, he would give them one of the spurs and say, you have won your spurs. And then it just caught on. Caught on. Evan's daddy, Brant Horner, avoids the showroom at Holland's. He prefers to stay back here along with John Sheffield, where not much has changed in more than a hundred years. At one time, they had 16 people making these little bitty miniature spurs in the back of the shop. The original store was McBurnett and that was back in, you know, the 1890s. And Mr. Holland purchased the store from Mr. McBurnett in 1918. And then we started the Western Jewelry in 1936. You know, the spur became family's traditions. We make, you know, a large one that's for a tie tat. We make little earrings um, that are really little small spurs. Birthdays, anniversaries, graduations, retirements. One of the very first spurs was purchased by Houston Hart, the owner of the local Standard Times newspaper. He actually gave it to Franklin Roosevelt, the president. And it kind of seems like after that day, everyone kind of jumped on the bandwagon and wanted a spur, you know, to earn their spurs. And that tradition has just kept going throughout the years. That tiny little piece of jewelry has actually found its place in history. I've got one that you guys made that a good friend gave me, and it has the TCR logo on it. Right, right. Yeah, I remember but that. What if I wanted one that was, you know, like a, a traditional cowboy or, you know, some Western scene or something like Well, we have a lot of steel dies that were actually made in the 30s and 40s, and they're actually right over here. These were hand cut back in the olden days in our shop. They're one of a kind. This one is of a kind. You know, these were not produced by machines. They were actually hand engraved and hand Look at this, ground. the state of Texas, and there's the Texas star. Oh my yep. gosh, that's the, look the, at that. That's the seal of Texas. That goes in the center of the spur. Of the actually, spur. all of these fit inside the center U-shape of the spur. Oh my gosh. And we do put them on um, keychains and conchos and other things, buckles. That's a sheep. Sheep? Which is, this used to be sheep country. And here's uh, a longhorn that we have. This has probably been used on hundreds of buckles. You know, all of them were made right here in this store. There's tons of them that have been made, especially with this die. 
a lot of these were hand cut 80 years ago, and I may still get a call today, somebody wanting that particular design or logo. It's not as if Brandt hasn't kept up with the times. He's worked here since 1985 and eventually bought the business from the Holland family several years ago. He's quick to admit this high-tech laser welding machine and computer etching system come in pretty handy. After all, the demand for the Holland spur clip has never slowed down. I send them all over the place, California, Colorado, New York, everywhere. We sell them all over the country. You know, when you're working with small, very intricate pieces of jewelry, and you know, and buckles too, there, there's very little room for error. The finer the detail, the more I like it. I just think it's a, a skill that you can't just go out and read a book and learn how to do it. Whenever I make a spur, inside the center of it, we'll put a brand or a logo, but most of the time we put initials and, and normally a monogram. And the letters that we use are a special Holland's Western style that was actually drawn up back in the 30s. And I actually still have the original drawing of every letter in the alphabet in two different sizes. That's a font developed for and used by you. And correct, yes. It, and I guess we should call it the Holland's Western font. I don't notice any young apprentices around here. I've hired, I believe, the last count was 29 apprentices. 29 Nine. apprentices. And I have none right now. Um, you know, due to either no interest, no skill, or it was just a job. I would have to say I'm very tough on the quality. It, it has to be perfect. Earning your spurs, a West Texas rite of passage. This gesture of kindness that started so long ago still communicates something words can never do. By meticulous attention to detail and dedication to tradition, Brant Horner says it's his responsibility to make sure this symbol of gratitude remains as solid today as it has for almost 90 years. So what would Chase Holland, who first created the spur, think about you carrying on the tradition today? Well, I hope he would be, you know, proud that we're still doing it and it's just continuing the tradition on and on. And I, I think it will always hopefully be that way. I love that story. Me too, and we've got plenty more where that came from. Just click on the subscribe button and keep traveling with us.